There's a nifty trick that books on New Age mysticism pull that religious apologists and leaders will be familiar with. See, to an outsider, it might seem hard to sell somebody on the idea of magic, right? Because eventually, they'll probably follow the magical recipe and realize that they didn't do anything. Of course, anybody who's familiar with how religion works knows that doesn't do the trick. But when you're still trying to wean somebody onto your beliefs, you can't count on the motivated reasoning that they're going to need to play along. So the first step is to create a whole bunch of time-sensitive barriers for entry. Uh, for example, if you want to do Wiccan magic, you'll first need a set of consecrated magical tools, right? And you can't buy those at consecratedmagicaltools.com or something. Wh whenever possible, you have to make them yourself. So before you can expect your magical spells to work, you have to handcraft a wand, a cup, a metal disc with a pentagram on it, and a knife. Make your own knife. And just in case that's not intimidating enough, you're also supposed to sew up your own robe and make your own altar, incense burner, offering bowl, and candle holders. Oh, and if possible, your own incense and candles. But you're not done yet. There's still much more work to be done because at this point, all you got is a bunch of homemade crap. It's not magical homemade crap yet so now you have to consecrate it and if you think that's going to be a simple process you clearly don't understand the point of this exercise you see magical tools or i'm sorry if you're trying to sound more badass magical weapons can only be consecrated during a full moon and you can't consecrate more than one at a time so even if you haul ass through the process of making your stuff it's still going to take you three full lunar cycles to prepare for it but wait, there's more, because at the same time as you're preparing your elemental weapons, you also have to master those elements, right? I mean, what good is the wand of fire if you can't magically control spiritual fire, right? So you'll also often find that you have this long list of meditations and whatnot that you have to do before you can properly wield even a consecrated weapon. And once you're done with all that, you need to wait one more lunar cycle, and then you'll be ready to undergo full initiation, and then you'll be able to do magic. Now, that's not the end of the con, but it's worth pausing for a second to examine what we've done. First of all, we filtered out almost everybody, right? Even if you honestly wanted to go through all this bullshit, most people would at some point give up or forget or move on before they got through the whole process. So with each passing moon phase, the system weeds out the people who aren't committed to the shit. You've also rooted out all the people that were looking for results, right? Because, like, if you wanted the end result of the magic, you almost certainly realize along the way through all of this shit that there's a less time-consuming, non-magical way to get whatever it is you're after. And at the same time that the system is weeding out all of the window shoppers, it's also giving itself plenty of time to give its prospective adherent the hard sell. Sure, you may have gotten into this thing because you heard you'd be able to manipulate the forces of nature with hand gestures and a stick. But while you're here anyway, getting ready for all that, let me tell you about all this great oneness of nature and cultural appropriation that comes along with it. So, so let's say you, like me, were dumb enough to actually jump through every single one of those hoops. Like me, you probably fucked it up once or twice. You forgot to do a meditation. You had to start over. You missed a full lunar cycle along the way or two. So now you're five, six, eight months into this shit, if not a full year. You finally got all your magic weapons consecrated. You're ready to go. You're fully initiated according to the ancient rites. You're dressed in your magical garb. You've opened your circle. You've banished any nearby demons. You've invoked the elementals to watch over you. And now it's time to finally do some magic. And nothing happens. Nothing. Literally, absolutely. You don't see anything. You don't feel anything. You don't perceive anything on a spiritual plane. You spent six to 12 months dedicated to absolutely nothing. And you're suddenly faced with a choice to either admit that you have been conned or pretend that you did feel a little something there for just a second. To aid you in that latter choice, of course, the spells that you're offered in the books all have pretty ambiguous results, or at least they have results that are entirely subjective, right? So, like, at best, the spell might, like, tell you that you'll feel a presence or hear a voice or see a glowing pentagram in the air, all internal stuff, you know? It's never going to warm a cubic centimeter of water by one degree Celsius or anything like that. And if the nature of the spell demands a tangible result, i.e. you're you know, doing a spell to bring about rain, there's going to be some prominent reminder that all you can do is affect the probability that there will be rain. And come on, this is your first time out of the gate doing magic. Did you really think you were going to summon up a nor'easter? It's better to spend a few years practicing up on those feel a presence type spells before you tackle something that big again, huh?
Now, other religions have their own version of these things, of course. Most of them have the sense to make vaguer claims about their magic that can be waved away with excuses like, God doesn't answer every prayer. But one way or the other, they're relying on this same concept. The idea that by the time you actually have to use the religion, you're going to be too committed to it to admit that it didn't work. When it comes time for Christianity to actually comfort you about the death of a loved one, it's going to fail. But the religion survives because by then it's too much of a part of your personality and your identity for you to easily part with it. It's the same tendency that keeps so many con artists out of trouble. People are too embarrassed to admit that they got duped. Look, there are a lot of ways that religion uses shame to control and maintain their disciples. They're so damn good at it that they've even managed to weaponize the shame you feel for being dumb enough to fall for their religion.